I was surprised to get hurt again from the last Thursday. No, I thought he I thought he uh I thought he played well. Um we need to um here's my my antagonist in this deal. Uh, a couple times he got dinged up a little things right there. I want those dudes to drag themselves off the field. I told them I don't want to see Jerry running out there to see if they're okay unless they're dead. And so uh, positives, he played well. Negatives, fix them. And so, yeah, no, that wasn't a surprise. Um, has worked his tail off since, the, since December 15th of last year, the end of the bowl game, uh, the beginning of winter conditioning. I thought he was awesome. He took to the challenge of, of being a leader, of being an older guy in that group. Um, having Merlin and, and Darian in the same group and, and seeing the leadership that those guys take and, and uh, didn't buck them being leaders. So credit to him because that's not always easy to do. And then work his tail off from here on out to, to get where he is. And it showed up. I mean, there, there's, th this came from Peyton Manning too. And it's probably the only sport that this is viable to. Because I mean, you can, you can get a lot of mental reps. You can, in, in other things, I mean, you look at great basketball players, they can take a few days off and come and play a great game. You can't cheat the game of football. It's too physical. It's too, there's too many demanding things. That's why not a lot of people play it because it's so hard to prepare for. And so he didn't do that. He didn't cheat the game and it showed up. It showed in on Saturday, I mean, on, on Thursday night when we played, he played well and shoot, he won the Mandrake Award. So uh, pretty cool, he bought into that. I think that's a really cool deal. Um, He's mad because he didn't get a black helmet, which is coming, but it's okay. There's, there's things coming to us, so it was good. We're, st we're still making progress. We're still a, a work in progress, a great work. I know I get um, I probably too, that's the right word, well, I refuse to give in. I, I, I expect, I demand that those guys practice to be perfect. I demand them to play at a, at a high level, higher than they think they can. And when I see we give up things that I think should be defended, it drives me crazy. Um, they shouldn't have scored. We, we had, we, we played, we played pretty good defense for the, the, 40, the first 40 plays of the game. I thought they were flying around, being really physical, doing a really good job. They had 87 total yards at halftime. Um, negative one passing yards. Uh, pretty good secondary. They couldn't throw it. Okay, so we got to we got to continue that dominance if we want to be what we talk about. We didn't. We gave in. They got an eight play, sixty nine yard drive, which, in my opinion, screwed up the whole night. Now the, we had sixteen missed tackles. Okay, that's for 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 as much as we do live football and getting game ready. Um, that wasn't a surprise to me. Where we, where we missed them, um, they had 90 positive yards after missed tackles. Okay? Well, that's almost half of their total yardage. I mean, you're looking at 110 yards. Now, 14 of those 16, we actually hit the guy and either bounced off, didn't wrap up, the second guy came in. There's two of them where if you're watching the tape and I say that's a missed tackle, you're probably looking at that guy going, well, he's just out of his mind. They ain't gonna make that play. I mean, I, I think we can put our bodies in position to make that play, and we didn't, but the other 14, those are tackles that we gotta make. Three of them were sack opportunities, where we lost 25 yards in, in I mean, we're gonna back them up this 25 yards off the rushing total that we just missed. I mean, one of them, we missed the guy on two guys on one play. Jermaine misses him as he comes off the edge, makes a great pass rush move, and doesn't hang on to him. And then Merlin grabs a hold of his, the back of his jersey and he's trying to strip the ball off, which I appreciate. But we talk about secure before you succeed. And he lets the guy go. Instead of it being a 15-yard loss, they get a six-yard gain. Okay? Those things are all fixable. Okay? Um, I complain about I thought we, were, I thought we got tired and we, we, we didn't finish right. Yes, we did. Now, I think our, our summer conditioning, I think what Coach Joe and those guys do, is unbelievable. I think Coach Joe, Coach Connolly is one of the best in the country at what he does, and, and we're lucky because he's helping us build this culture. I mean, he, he makes them tough, and we've come. Our toughness has gotten so much better than when we first got here. Okay, we're still not where I wanted to be, but we're making those progresses. Once we take them over on fall, the first day of fall camp, they're mine. And there's a, there's a fine line between having them ready to play and just wearing them out. I mean, you can you can grind them into the ground so they ain't ready. And Coach Slocum's dad, R.C. Slocum, I got great fight advice from him a few years back about the best thing you can do for your football team is have them game ready. 
have them as fresh as can be on day one because they ain't going to be fresh the rest of the season. They're going to be beat up and they're going to hurt. And so there's a fine line of getting them to where they're flying around. They were flying around. For the first 47 plays, we were flying our tails off. And then we got a little bit tired. We Now, we played, we played 25 guys on defense, so we substituted plenty. Okay? The, we probably didn't run them as much in the pursuits and stuff this year during, during stuff because I thought we would get enough of it during we went to Tonzona and trying to adjust it. So we're not out of shape. We're not game, we were not game ready for what my expectation is, okay? Uh, I expect them to run to the ball full speed every single play. And I don't ever want to see a guy saving energy. That's why we rotate so many guys. And I think the human body is something that you can get to where those guys are flying around. They don't save anything. I mean, a backside safety should be running his tail to the ball every single time. And I think when I first got here, they thought I was crazy. Now they understand the expectation, okay? <laughs> I refuse to justify success with mediocrity. I won't give in. You, you, can, you can justify all the success you want by saying, yeah, they did pretty good. That's a loser's mentality, and I refuse. So they're gonna play up to my expectation, and if we have to rotate 30 guys, we will. Because now here, here, here's where you have a fine separation. I think we got a lot of talent in the back end. I think we got a lot of talent in, at linebacker, okay? We can rotate those guys, and we got plenty of bodies up front. If you rotate them right, and you're talented enough, you'll be really good. If there's a huge separation between the first group and the second group, you don't have that luxury. And we do. Now they need to get game, they need to get game reps, and we'll keep working them in more. But part of that was getting those guys game ready. When you don't, when you don't live tackle, you're not game ready. And so there's going to be some of those. So the 16 mixed tackles, I can live with. Now, a good football team, they make their best improvement between week one and two. That's if you have a chance, if you're going to be a good football team, one and two, you should see drastic improvement. And then the rest of the season takes over. You're going to get a little bit more nicked up and bruised. And then you, you should get a little bit more comfortable, but you should be able to see a dramatic improvement between one and two. And so we've, we've uh, when I say I'm going to, now they, that's funny, I guess they listen to this more than I think. Uh, they were worried I was going to kill them on Sunday. And we ran significantly more than we did the week before. But the running is, and part of this is all coaching. Them, them not being game ready, that's coaching. That ain't their fault. Okay, now they need to take care of their bodies during the week, drinking fluids and all that stuff. But what they do between the time we start, 20 and 12, that's all me. That's all designed by me, so that, that, that's my fault. That's coaching. So if they weren't physically ready, that's my fault. And I won't stand for that. I'll make sure they're ready. And so I'm not going to kill them because you have to down fresh. But if your heart's pu constantly pumping, and you get more red blood cells moving around your body, you're going to have more oxygen produced, you're going to be in better shape. And so some of the things that we locked off on, running from drill to drill, that wasn't going to happen anymore. We, we try to, because it's hot, we try and give them a little bit more rest, forget it. They're going to run. They're going, they're going to, we're going to make it up during practice. And they've been a lot better this week, so we should see a drastic improvement on Saturday. Uh, I think uh, there's no drop off in the talent level between those first and second guys. And so you should see a number increase of reps. Um, Willie Hartz is extremely smart. And he's really, really fast. And he's got unbelievable feet. Okay? Uh, frame, he's probably about the size as Cam Phillips was last year. He's tinkering right at around 173 pounds. He'll, he'll put on another 10 pounds over the next year and a half. And he's got a chance to be a really special player. So I think before between the two Ranger spots, we got four guys that it doesn't matter who's in there. And because we go right and left now, and I make those guys go back and forth all day long, it doesn't matter if one of them needs to break, then either one of those guys can go on any side. So whoever's playing the hot hand, because they do have a hot day, hot and cold day, whoever's up that day, well, now that you got four of them at those spots, you got a chance to, to really be good in coverage. I mean, you can pin our ears back and, and now we got to digest, okay, how good's the quarterback? What does he see coming? We're also good enough to sit back in zone and put enough bodies up there where they can't run the ball. So those guys give you that luxury because we're different now. Our cover two safeties are not free safety, sit back and play. I expect those guys to make plays at the line of scrimmage. Now our Tillman should make plays in the backfield. A deep out safety from 12 yards making plays at the line of scrimmage, 90% of the coach is going to look at you and say you're crazy. You're going to give up a big play. Well, you know what? If they prepare right and they watch tape and they look at what we're coaching them and teaching them, they're not going to. And if, they, if, they, if the one on the front side bites, then the back side guy should overlap and, and make up for him. And we're getting to that point now. Now on the corner, 
I think we've got four, and I thought uh, probably five. Jordan Clark probably played above himself on on, Saturday, on Thursday night. Uh, Jack Jones came in, him and Chase probably, they, I think they each had 37 and 35 reps. That's probably pretty good. Uh, Kobe had a little uh, 41, I think, okay? And then Tamarcus and Jordan kind of split the other ones. I mean, we played 64 snaps. So I think you've got a great combination that you can keep those guys fresh. And then when we get into key situations where we need the playmakers out there, okay, whoever has the hot hand that day. If it's Jack Jones, great. Jack Jones was the one that had the hot hand on Thursday night, okay? Uh, they got to a point in the game on Saturday where in the secondary, we, we were covering them. They could, there was nobody open. Well, it's hard on a quarterback, okay? They hadn't, they, they, and this goes back to the whole schematic thing. They hadn't seen what we do before live in person, so it's hard for the quarterback to read. We've done some different things in coverage this year, so they're, they're struggling trying to figure out, are we one hole, are we one high, are we two high, what are we doing? And because those guys are so athletic and they can move and do it on the snap, it's really hard for the quarterback to tell. So you get a, when you get a quarterback that hadn't seen it before and then we got some really talented guys, it makes it hard. I mean, they had 80 yards passing. I mean, Kent State's a spread offense. 80 yards passing, that's, that, that, man, that's pretty good. And, I, and I, I'm not one to give them compliments, but that's pretty good. Um, we, had a, we gave up 120 rushing. We gave up three big plays that the, the quarterback, they, they, one of them was scheme. One of them, they, they had everybody blocked up. And I tell our guys on the sideline, hey guys, every once in a while, you're not gonna be free. You have to make a play. And so they blocked everybody up and it took us 20 yards to get them down on the ground. Uh, what I thought was really good, um, we made a big emphasis on third down. Third down coverage was really good. The, the execution of what we were trying to do was really good. When we got to the third quarter, I thought we had a lapse for about 12 minutes because we finished it off pretty good the game. But when we gave up that eight play 69 yard drive, which they've been hearing about that all week because that, that, that's ridiculous. When you have a chance to dominate somebody, when they make a mistake, you ought to freaking punish them. And I think Coach Lewis, Sean Lewis has done a phenomenal job with that program. I mean, I, I, I read some information. They have a 3.0 cumulative GPA average for their football team. That's pretty damn, dang impressive, excuse me. Uh, they, they were trying to go fast. We stopped them with some of our, the way we were lining up, it stopped some of that, so they tried to, so they didn't kill their guys. They tried to change the tempo up. Um, they did the check with me stuff. We didn't execute one time and it was a touchdown. I mean, their, their touchdown was a third and six. That was one of their five third down conversions. One, it was a third down, so there was a lot of emphasis on that. Two, we didn't have a lack of attention because they looked to the sideline twice on that play. And I'm sitting here trying to change the coverage because I knew where they were checking to because they saw us in man coverage. And if they, we got one guy, and who was it? Willie Hartz. He looks over and he's trying to get a change and the, the far side on them, they didn't look over that time and so they scored a touchdown. Now, they beat us one-on-one. -on -one. He didn't change the coverage. He was playing man-to-man -man and he got beat one-on-one. -on -one. That's, that's our best guy. I mean, I think Ashari's got to make that play every time. So when you get complacent and you get lackadaisical, those things happen. We've got to refuse to allow those things happen. And I don't want our guys to justify success with mediocrity either, okay? 200 yards against, uh, against the team, when you have better players, which we do, you should win. And they should not be satisfied because they got 200 yards. They should want to dominate them. I, I mean, I don't want them to get a freaking yard. And is that possible? No. But that's got to be the mentality, the mentality that they have. And once we, once we get to that point and we don't feel okay about getting to, when it's third and 10 every time and they get, I mean, we only had four three and outs, we should have more. Now, we had a bunch of four and five, I mean, but we didn't get, we had four three and outs. We should have, they're gonna have 11 possessions, I want seven of them. And, I mean, it's, it's all an attitude. We're, and we're getting closer. I mean, um, I don't wanna sound negative, because we won. And the, the most important thing is to hold them one less point, and we did. So, now we got a heck of a challenge this week, because they're coming in here from a new coaching staff, that has, I mean, Coach Taylor's done a phenomenal job with this program because they've been, since they got there in January, they've been preaching, okay, you gotta do it this way, buy in, do it our way, buy in, you'll be success, you'll see success. And guess what? They saw a whole bunch of it on the field on Saturday. So you score 77 points, I mean, you've gotta execute against anybody to do that. And so uh, Kevin Thompson's done a great job at quarterback. 
He's changed his personality from last year when he wanted to run last year. He was looking to get out of the way. He was trying to run people over on Saturday. Pierre Williams, they, they were throwing the ball up to him. He was catching it like God, Godzilla over people. So they're going to come in here fired up and excited. And, and I mean, he's got them convinced that they can come in here and win. And I went back and watched all of their, during the offseason, I watched all, they only played 10 last year because they had a couple canceled. They went two and eight, okay? They start over the program. He come and rebuild. If you watch their second game of the season, guess what? They played San Diego State and they had the lead 13 to seven with six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So they got plenty of talent to be competitive. They got plenty of talent to come in here and whoop your tail if you don't get your mind right. Do we have better players? Yeah, we do. We got more scholarships too, okay? We better get our kids ready to, to the expectation. And it doesn't matter who you play, whether we play Kent State, whether we play Sacramento State, whether we play Michigan State, whether we play Colorado. They've got to come in with the mindset to dominate who's ever in front of them. It's not that they're, they're, our opponent should be faceless to them. We've got to get prepared and just go in there with the idea that we're going to freaking annihilate them. And then that's the mentality we want around here. And I'm here we go. What, what do kids often tend to do well? Uh, they, there's a lot of movement, so they get your eyes really dirty. Uh, they pull guards, they, the big, heavy quarterback run game, and they've got a quarterback that is believing in what they're doing, so they're going to get into a lot of empty sets, get in fly motion, uh, so that they get your eyes going one way. They're going to pull guards and tackles back the other way, so they get an extra blocker going against. They do a lot of gap scheme stuff where they try and create extra gaps. Um, now, when they were at Utah last year, they had two big old tight ends, so they got in all that nasty stuff in 12. They don't have those guys on their roster yet. I'm sure they'll recruit to them, but they've got a couple tight ends that are really physical. Uh, one was a running back last year that tries, I mean, he's got that fullback mentality that tries to kill you. Uh, so they could get in their 11 personnel stuff and get in the nasty and, and do those things where they run behind the line of scrimmage and, and get you to look, get your eyes dirty. Um, the quarterback, I mean, 84, uh, Pierre Williams, they're going to throw it up to him. And it says he's listed at 6'1", 210. He looks like he's about 6'5". He's got long dreads coming out of his helmet. I mean, he can play. And so they're going to take a shot at our, our corners. And now I got all the confidence in the world in our corners. I think our corners are really good. So I hope they throw it up. Because, I mean, we, had, we touched one ball on Saturday. We had, we had two legitimate chances at interceptions, and we didn't get either one. And that bothers me. Because the one, Kobe took his eyes off the ball, looked on the sideline for a second, and he drops it. And then the other, the other one, I thought it was a deep pass over the middle. Uh, we're in cover two. The Tillman did a great job running underneath it. And I think between Cam and, and uh, Ashari, they weren't sure which one was going to – they didn't want to run into each other. And I think if Cam just sells out and dies, he's going to have a chance. It's going to be a heck of a catch if he makes it. But we need to make sure that we keep those guys, keep the quarterback in the pocket. And if they throw the ball, we got to break on it and go get the ball, intercept it. I mean, now we got a heck of a lot longer way to get to 20. I mean, we took one game away. So um, – but, I mean, we got good enough players. The, the running game, it's going to be very similar to what we saw this week. A lot of zone read, a lot of quarterback power read, uh, a lot of quarterback uh, counters. Um, their their O-line is very physical. They do a good job of coming off the ball. I mean, they, they knock Southern Oregon just directly off the ball all night long. Um, so well, we, we have a good challenge. I mean, they're, they're gonna, we're going to have to get ourselves ready to go and have that mindset to freaking dominate somebody to go out there and, and play well. Uh, but they, they, I mean, shoot, they scored 77 points, so it's scary. I mean, anytime somebody scores 77 points, it doesn't care. I don't care who you're playing. That's freaking impressive, man. I mean, there's, shoot, there's only 60 minutes in a game. At some point, you, you, the clock's going to run out, and you, you shouldn't get 77, but shoot, almost scored 100. I mean, that's a lot of points. He was. No, that was a great, a great catch and a great throw. Um, so on the line of scrimmage, and this, this will go back to technique. He's up there in press, so it's going to be one on one, and he knew a fade was coming. He knew because I mean we talked all week long. If they get, if they open up the middle, they're going to throw the ball outside. I mean the quarterback knows that the free safety can't get there. He's got help. It was on the 21 yard line. It's in the prime position. That slot fade is a really hard route to cover. So he's on the inside shoulder because we have no free safety. So he's, he's playing the correct technique. He cuts off when they snap the ball. He gives a little bit of ground. Now we want him to square him up and get hands on. Well, he opened up, so he opened up the floodgate. So now the guy's got a direct off the snap, no touch. So he's now he's just running and fading to the corner. 
Two-step recovery, so your angle, you get beat off the ball, you don't ever run at the defender, run at an angle to where he's going. Plenty fast enough to get there. And he started to, but then as he turns, and we do a ton of work on this, and this was probably the most the, the thing that he saw, and he was like, I can't believe I did it, and it won't happen again. We turn, we talk to him all the time. You can see the ball over your head just like this, just like this. Your shoulders are still square, so you can still run fast. Well, you watch him right as he gets down to the corner of the end zone, he does this. His shoulders are turned, and now you see a two-yard separation. So when he goes up with the hand, he saw the ball, but now there's a two-yard separation. If he just does this, he probably intercepts the ball. And we're sitting here a little bit happier because we didn't let him score. Okay? Uh, but it was, it, it's a technique, technique error. And you know what? Those guys are Division I football players, two on scholarship. They're good players. He beat them one-to-one. -one. Every once in a while, you're going to get beat. Um, I don't like it, but, I mean, that, and we're recruiting to where – you get those guys that they refuse him. And now he came off the sideline, so they're jogging off. And that's the other thing. I mean, I think the, the most important thing after they score, your field goal team better freaking do everything in the world to try and block it. Because if you, if, you watch, if you watch a good defense, you want to see how hard somebody plays, watch their field goal block team after they get scored on. And that's all coaching. That has nothing to do with that's all effort. It has nothing to do with it's, a, it's what you allow them to do. Well, they tried their tails off to block it. And then you're gonna see our guys run off because I hate looking them. I hate looking them die if they're dejected as they're running off. So they're gonna run off. And he, he was looking at me and and it was like I could just tell he's like, God, I let him down. I'm like, well, you know what? The whole team. Don't don't it ain't about it, it's about us. We did. We let him score. And he knew exactly what he did, and he was like, I turned my shoulders, didn't I? And I was like, it's all right. Next time up, you're gonna get him again. And so that's the mentality you want. He knew what he did, he was pissed off about it. And so now, work all week and fix it. And I think we've had two really good days. And it was, it was really hot out there today, which is an advantage to us. Guess what? It's going to be hot on Friday night. Oh, and then here's, here we go. This, this is good. This is science stuff. I, I mentioned something about being hot and all that stuff, okay? So I get all these fancy emails. I'm going to take my email off the freaking thing because I get, I get all kinds of stuff and I go through and read them. Well, now there's this wet ball, okay, calculation. We get dangerous. I mean, if it gets too high, it gets dangerous. We've had a couple in the 90 where that's really, I mean, it gets high, you know. Okay. We got well-conditioned athletes. Last year, because I'm complaining about, you know, I didn't think we got tired last year. Last year, we played uh, UTSA on day one. The wet ball measurement was at 68, 68%. Okay. It's not bad. Well, I know 64%, excuse me. Well, on Friday night, it was 78%. Significantly higher than last year, according to this metric, which means you're going to have more cramping. You're going to have more... So my philosophy is get in better shape, okay? My job. So they run their tail off on Sunday. They run the tail off yesterday. Well, last year I go, okay, well, it was 108 degrees of kickoff last year for Michigan State. What was the wet ball? Well, it was 64. So there went that theory. I couldn't tell them, well, we didn't struggle with it last year. So I love all this science stuff because then if there's, if there's a reason that this wet ball, then how do, you, how do you defeat it? Is it drink more water? Is it run more? Is it, what is it? Well, so now we got our, our trainers, and they love me for this. Now we're going to check hydration on all of our guys, okay? So now we'll see what their hydration level is and see when we get them into the hotel, which is awesome that when we stay, this is a great place so we can get them rest and relaxed and we can get them hydrated. So if they aren't running their tails off on Friday night, I'll wait for the next email and we'll figure it out and we'll see what it is there. Uh, you know, I don't, well, there's a metric of a measurement from the daily temperature to the humidity in the air, to the, the barometric pressure, something. Now, I'm starting to talk out of my league, so I shouldn't talk when you're uneducated about something, but it measures you and it gives you from your, from your hydration level where we get dangerous. So are you drinking enough water? Do you have enough water in your system? Is there humidity too high that's gonna take you out? And you, then you get into the full body cramps and you get in all those things. I think our training staff does a phenomenal job, both Coach Joe and Jerry, of making sure, I mean, we have more water out there and more right stuff and more Powerade. And I mean, they're, Constantly, I mean, you, if you watch, if you're at our practice, you see buckets of stuff. They walk out with drinks, and they've got them in their locker room. And so, unless they refuse to do it, there's no reason. Okay. So the hitting part of it takes some of it out of you. Are they in, are they out of shape? No. Were they game ready? No. That's on me. That that's on the coaches. And so we address that. And I think some of it is the the freaking stuff that we do. And dang it, the stuff that we do in practice where I expect them when we go from drill to drill. Get your tail to the next spot, grab some water, and work from there. And so we, we got off of that a little bit. Well, guess what? When you get complacent, bad things happen. That's coaching. That's not their fault. So 
If they're going to do it, I'm going to run with them too. And, and I, I tell them, hey, come on, keep up. This is the pace we're going to do in the afternoon. So, and they do, they've done a lot better job. And they, and they get it too. Because when you watch it, the great thing is when you watch it on tape, you can see a drastic. I'm mean, going to go to play 47. Anybody wants our cut up, go to play 47. And you can see, you can watch the, the, the secondary pursuit from the linebackers in the secondary. It's significantly slower. And guess what? All of a sudden, of those 16 missed tackles, now the, the ones are in the backfield, but on that eight-play drive, we had seven of them. Five of them were pursuit issues. Now, we missed a couple tackles early on in the game that I don't consider missed tackles because here's one. Evan comes up there, and he's flying to the ball, and he doesn't break down, and he takes his shot, and the guy steps inside, and guess what? Evan misses him, but Darian Butler levels him, knocks him to the ground. I don't consider that a missed tackle by, by uh, Evan because of the way we teach it. Now, if Evan would have went up there and broke down and the guy makes him miss, which he did on the fumble that we caused, it was a missed tackle. And they, even though that guy comes in, now he gets two yards. So on third and four, they got, we make a call where we should have been okay on the defense, but they split us for a zone up the middle. They get a 15-yard gain. Evan comes up. He breaks down, which we don't teach. The guy makes him miss. And then Cam Phillips comes from the side with great pursuit, hits him. And then Jack Jones with great pursuit. And Jack Jones, give him some credit because he's bought into all this running nonsense we do. And he hits him right in the side, and the ball's out, and guess what? We got four guys there to recover it, okay? We had five caused fumbles on Saturday night. Now, they fumbled it six times. The first play of the game, he gave us a gift. Maybe it was that wet ball. The ball was wet, okay? He gives us a gift, and we get a second and 17. The other five, those were because we were playing physical, and we caused fumbles. Now, two of them, they got really lucky, and they bounced right to them, and the third one went out of bounds. Well, if you take away the ball five times, our offense is going to have a lot of short fields. We got 10 points off turnovers. That's pretty good. Uh, you give Jaden an opportunity as he gets more comfortable. Um, if we can give them short fields, I mean, they're going to be pretty, we're going to be pretty dangerous on offense. And so that part of it was good. Um, that's, that's from that. Last what, what else? I'm like, nothing? Uh, what's the, uh, what's, what kind of difference? Um, I think getting the first game out of the way, because you never know what you're gonna, what's going to happen from, from game to game, year to year. Each team is so different year to year. Even though we're, the, and the great thing is we're young. Like I said, we had 25 guys play on defense. We had 25 freshmen within the program, whether they were red shirt or, or true, play in the game. Uh, in the back end, we had three true freshmen play. That is unheard of. In my 20 years of coaching, I've never done that before. Right now, up until last year, I'd never fought, started five true freshmen on defense either. So we're doing all kinds of things around here that, that are against the norm. But they're, you don't know what you're going to get. The speed, of the, day, the speed of the game is so different that how fast are they going to adjust? Well, I thought Kiwan and Willie and Jordan adjusted unbelievably fast. Now, those three kids were pretty dang fast themselves. They're talented. But how you see things, they, they really were able to adjust well to that. So this week, they have a little confidence, okay? And I always say there's a fine line between being confident and arrogant. Now, I won't allow them to get arrogant because they won't play. And if I don't think they're practicing, like I said earlier in this thing, you can't cheat the game of football. And we've got, this is the great luxury when you have, when you've done a good job in recruiting like we have in the secondary, guess what? Nobody's expendable. So if you don't want to practice, good. Go sit over there with Coach Joe and, and those guys. Because the next guy up, I mean, I, I tell them all the time, go look up the story of Wally Pitt. If you don't know who that is, Google it. Because if you give somebody an opportunity, you might be standing on the sideline for a long time. And so that's kind of been the, the theme of practice this week. Don't give somebody an opportunity if you've got a good player behind you. And the more good players you have, the better chance you have to be successful. Okay. We gotta, we gotta stop the, we gotta stop the run better this week. Uh, we gotta continue to fly around uh, to the ball. We gotta play harder, longer. Um, I mean, 200 yards, seven points. I want to be better. And people can say, you know what? He's, he, he's arrogant, and, and he's on, on. I mean, that's what I want to do. I, I, I will never justify mediocrity, justify success with mediocrity, because that's a loser's mentality. If you do that, you might as well retire and quit because I want to be the best. And we talk about everything we want to do in our, in our program is compete. Then compete to try and just freaking break somebody off. And 
That's the mentality. That's the theme that we've had been going through practice. So I can't wait till I, you know, that, that's the one thing for during season. You play the game and I don't, I, I mean, I stayed up, I stayed up Saturday night, I mean, Thursday night and I watched it. So I'm sitting there in bed and I'm watching it over and over and I'm taking little notes and then I got to play 47. And when I saw that thing go to, in the tank, in my opinion, and now I'm sitting there getting really bugged about it. Well, all I can think about is, okay, we got to be freaking get ready to go. When's, when's Friday going to get here? And then we got to wait till another, we get another X day. We got to wait till the following Saturday. I mean, I love game day. I mean, it, it the butterflies, the competition, everything that it, that it drives. And so you win game day on Tuesday and Wednesday practice. Well, this week it was Monday and Tuesday practice because we play Friday. And so our theme, I mean, they, they hear it from me all the time. Well, you don't win on Saturday. You make Saturday easy by flying around and busting your tail on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Saturday, everything just comes to you. And last year, they didn't get that. Last year, they were trying to find their way out of practice. This, this, that today, they knew, okay, when we got done with our team stuff, there was going to be a little bit extra running. And when you have a chance to be successful is when they don't bat an eye at it. When they don't believe in what you're preaching, you better move on. Because once you lose them, you ain't ever getting them back. And right now, they believe in what we're doing. And shoot, I love how hard they're working, and I, I love those boys to death. So let's go friggin' run through a wall, see what we can dominate. And that's been the theme this week. Thanks, Danny. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Let's have a great week.